Sphingidae Mundi, Hog Moths of the World. This book right here is the source of a lot of praise, but also the source of a lot of criticisms. Some people proclaim that this is the Bible of the Hog Moths, and others, well, they hate it. Why is that so? And why is this book so controversial? Why are there so many people that love it, but also so many people that hate it? Well, I guess we're gonna find out in this episode of Let's Read Together. What's up everyone and welcome to this episode of Let's Read Together and today I'm going to show you the Sphingidae Mundi. The Sphingidae Mundi, The Hog Moths of the World is an interesting book because it remains one of the few and maybe the only books that can be used for hog moths as a global reference. There don't exist many books that cover this family globally. So this book is both subject of a lot of praise and criticisms and why this is well, for that we have to take a look at the contents. So first here we have an introduction that talks about the cultural and economical significance of hog moths. Here it talks briefly about the morphology and for example, it shows the wing venation and the morphology of the tarsus, which are the feet of this insect, or the labial palps, basically the head uh, morphology. Here we see uh, all the genera, a systematic catalogue. For example, here we see all the genera such as clanis, agbasia, agris, etc. So it's possible for you to look them up. And finally we get to the meat and potatoes of this book, as I like to call it, because most of its contents are what you're about to see right now. This is a global checklist of um, all the Sphingidae. And um, a lot of these uh, specimens were photo stacked in museums, so they are illustrated here below per genus. For example, here we see the genus Acherontia, the deadhead hog moth. Here on top we see the Acherontia lachesis, one species uh, from Asia. Acherontia atropos, this is the deathhead hog moth as you'll find in Africa and uh, Europe. And here Acherontia styx. Now these three hog moths are the only uh, three species of Acherontia that are described. So uh, it basically shows how per genus uh, each of these species are covered and photo stacked. So this is quite interesting if we think about it. Now the further we go into the book the more we will understand what the, uh, what the contents of these books are. It's basically um, a per genus reference of hog moths. And it even contains some, um, some text and, uh, about the early stages and eventual host plants, if they were known. And here on the right we see information. It's, uh, for example, contains their distribution, their pupa, their host plant, the type species, the genus. So um, some of the taxonomical information that you need to know about these species. And a little ecological information as well. Here we see uh, Amphimoea valkeri with its giant proboscis illustrated on this page. Quite interesting. So some of you may ask. On the surface level, this book looks, looks really good, and I agree. Um, if we just take a look at the, uh, at the form, not the contents, then, um, then I agree it looks pretty good. The problem with this book is that there are mistakes. Some of these specimens that are illustrated here are misidentified. Uh, sometimes males are depicted as females or the other way around. 
Um, the question is, uh, how important are these mistakes to you? Well, that's the thing. If you are just a hobbyist or an amateur that uh, wants to have one of the few global references for Sphingide, then I would say maybe some of these mistakes are acceptable. On the other hand, if you are a researcher and you want to use this book for a scientific reference, then mistakes are more unacceptable because, to be honest, scientific work should be free of mistakes. Now, I know this is not always possible, but um, I've spoken to an expert that uh, has researched Sphingide all his life on a scientific level, that had written many papers about them, uh, including cladistics, morphology, taxonomy, evolution, ecology, etc. And he said to me that um, he started counting the mistakes in his book and he stopped after 100 because he gave up. There were so many mistakes. Uh, this is a bit painful to think about. Mm, I will not reveal his name uh, because it was a private conversation between him and me. And I'm not very big on broadcasting private information on YouTube and naming people. But uh, this has been told to me by one of the top experts on Sphingide. And this is goes to show that yes, there are mistakes in this book. And if you are willing to forgive that, it's all up to you because it is an expensive work. Uh, on the other hand, it is it still has very a very good use function. Uh, just because it's one of the few books that just glow that show a global index of all the hog moths of the world. This is very rare. I mean, online I couldn't find such a thing. So um, another thing is that this book was published some time ago. I think uh, I have to check, but I think it's I think it's like. In 1980 or something, I uh, I can't find it right now. But the problem with old books is that uh, they become outdated. Uh, taxonomy is ever changing. Some species are split into two species or more. Uh, some species are being renamed. And new species are being discovered. And if you buy a book that's like maybe a few decades old, chances are some of the newly described species are not going to be in there. Uh, the genera are going to have their old and outdated names. Uh, is this a big problem? Mm, well, I don't think so. If you know how to do your proper uh, taxonomical research, it shouldn't stop you from uh, finding out the true identity of some species that you are looking for. Um, because it's still uh, possible to follow taxonomy and see one of the recent changes. But it, makes it, it does make it less practical. And that's one of the things, you know. And that's, that's, that's one of my criticisms that I would have, just the fact that it is a little bit an oldish book, uh, not very outdated, but yes, it's not the modern taxonomy. And the fact that it contains mistakes. But I do have to say, if you are just a hobbyist or an amateur like me, then um, some of these mistakes are not going to be a big deal. It is going to be a big deal if you are going to write a paper on uh, on hog moths and you need a reference or you need to ID some specimens and you know, for example, you're doing a, a bio survey and uh, you're using this book to identify everything you found that will um, end up in you making mistakes and just publishing scientific errors. Now this is unacceptable. So as a scientific reference, it does have some uh, big flaws. Now the writer of this book, he is uh, quite famous. He has made many books like this. I believe there's also one about Saturnidae and uh, many about butterflies like bird wings and uh, swallowtails. His name was uh, Bernard Darbera, an entomologist. And also the opinions of him are also mixed, just like this book, because um, <clears throat> Mr. Darbera, he was um, a creationist and he wasn't afraid of letting the world know and uh, some of his work contain creationist views and if you are looking at the biological work you know like say biological literature or faunistics then that's really unacceptable to to shoehorn your opinions in it like this uh, for this book it doesn't matter because this book appears to be very factual and free from opinions so uh, it's just the author that I was discussing but as for this work, it doesn't seem to suffer the same problem. But honestly, in my opinion, for what it is, uh, I think it's, it's okay, it's a good book. You know, uh, just simply because there are no better alternatives, 
it's uh, uh, simply because there are no no other alternatives to this book then I think it's already a valuable thing to have just take it with a grain of salt and if you're using it for more than just enjoyment then um, then you just you know have to make sure that you are getting the right identifications check up on modern taxonomy don't blindly follow what's written in a book okay S just study a little bit more look up the taxonomy look up recent changes new species have been described don't buy a book online and take anything that it says for granted uh, given any book may contain errors um, although this book is said to contain many for example, here have, we do have an illustrated index of the genus Macroglossum, the hummingbird hog moths. Uh, in my country there's one species of them, the Macroglossum stellatarum. And uh, it's, it's really nice to see them illustrated like this, you know. So uh, if you want to ID some of these species, then I think it's still possible to do so with this book. So uh, there you go. I do wish that at some point there there would be a website like this where you can globally look up all the hog moths. I think technology is very useful. I'm a YouTuber and I make websites about butterflies and moths. And I very much prefer online sources to uh, books like this, simply because a website can be updated and a book cannot be. Well, unless you buy a newest version, of course, but it's a lot of work. So, uh, But for what it is, I think this book is okay. Uh, if you're an amateur, if you just want to stare at hog moths and need a little help ID IDing them, then uh, I'd say go ahead, this is a good book for you. If you're a scientist and you need some scientific reference for your work, then, then I'm not sure if I would recommend it. Um, I would say it's possible to use it as a, re as a reference, but don't use it as your only reference, okay? You must at least try to, you know, use uh, other sources as well. So, it's species index, but I think this covers most of the content. Anyway, this is uh, Bart Commons with the Spingine Muni. Hope to see you next episode of Let's Read Together. Bye bye. So, if you watch this episode and think that despite my criticisms on it, you still want to buy it, well, there's some bad news. This work can really be expensive. I've taken a look online and this book here, it seems to sell for 500 to uh, more than a thousand dollars. So unless you have a lot of money saved up or are really enthusiastic about Sphingide, the bad news is this is a really expensive work. And this is not that uncommon because um, very specialist literature about mods like this, it tends to be very expensive because there's a very small market for it, you know. If you write something like Harry Potter, then the whole world wants to read your drivel. But if you make a beautiful book about moths, well, your audience is restricted to just a few thousand people in the world. So when, when one of those people does want to buy it, you got to charge a lot to make some profit. Especially if your work is going to be used by researchers and biologists, etc. But if you still want to buy it, I provided some links in the comments and the description where you can see where to buy this book online. So if you, I guess if you're rich enough and you just want to throw that many dollars to a book that uh, shows you some good Sphingidae species, then by all means go ahead. Links are in the comments and description. I'm just showing you where you can buy it. So we both know that you are getting the right book and not the wrong one. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next episode. The internet is so useful. But still, a good biologist is nothing without his field guides and books. If you want to read a new novel, there are probably hundreds of reviews waiting for you online. But if you are into things like this, then it's probably hard for you to find reviews. So thanks for watching my mini series on YouTube called Let's Read Together, where I review books, field guides, that focus on biology, nature, and my study of insects. I don't expect this series to get millions of views because it's such a peculiar thing. But that's the great thing about it. It's easy to find reviews of popular books, but I'm one of the few people who showcase things like this. Now, if you like this concept, please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel,
and consider joining my crowdfunding platform Patreon. Because for some reason YouTube has decided to demonetize my channel. So I am dependent on crowdfunding for 100% in order to support this channel and upgrade the production quality. If I got 1 million subscribers tomorrow it wouldn't make a difference for me. What counts is the people that support me. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next episode.